Hi everybody. So tonight I am going to be broadcasting about nine items you can find in the store for just one dollar. First off, let me tell you who I am. I am Priestess Autumn Phoenix, Priestess of Coven of the Phoenix, located here in New York City. Where you can find me on social media is Instagram at Autumn underscore Phoenix One. Facebook, my page is Magically Blessed. Twitter at Priestess Autumn. YouTube at Autumn Phoenix. And Periscope at Autumn Phoenix. When you start doing witchcraft, you don't need a whole lot of money. You don't have to buy out the witch shop down the block because those items cost a lot of money and you might not have the funds to pay for it. And yes, they do charge tax, especially if you live in New York City and you know our taxes here are quite high. So, you have to stick within your budget. Only buy what you can afford. Only buy what you actually need. Just because a witch has a quote unquote authentic cauldron that costs $50 does not mean that you need one too. Especially if you can't afford it. You can just use a pot in your house. And a pot will probably cost the same amount of money, $50. And the collagens that they do sell at witch shops are small. But the larger the collagens are, the more expensive they, they are. I saw one collagen in a witch shop in Manhattan that was $150. But it was enormous. It was about the size of a microwave. But because of the size, that's why it costs so much money. So if you can't afford to spend $150, then don't spend $150. If you can't pay your bills for the rest of the month, don't buy that crystal that is gorgeous. Don't buy that emerald. Don't buy that jade. Don't buy that diamond. Especially at a witch shop. Actually, diamonds, jade, emerald, and rubies, they cost more in a witch shop than they do in a jewelry store. Because the owners of those witch shops knows that you need it. Thank you. <laughs> they know that you need it. So that's why they jack up the prices. Um, there's a witch shop here in Manhattan on 14th Street. It's a hard name to pronounce, but I'll get back to you on what the name is. But they do sell tiny pieces of emerald. Emerald is a beautiful gem. It's gorgeous. And they have like pieces of the gem for like maybe five or ten dollars. And the largest piece they have is five hundred and sixty-five dollars. Emerald is a rare gem. So the owners are going to charge what it's worth and that type of gem, emerald, ruby, diamond, um, pink quartz crystals, yeah it's quite a bit of money. So if you can't afford it, you can just stick with a clear quartz crystal. A clear quartz crystal can take the place of any crystal that you might not have. So you don't have to go, buy, go out and buy a diamond, or jade, or ruby, especially if you can't afford it. Stick within your budget. Only buy what you can afford and what you actually need for your spell or ritual or curse or hats. The first thing you can find in the store for just one dollar is herbs and spices. Find them in your supermarket. The spice section is terrific for picking up herbs and spices that can be used in satchels, incense blends, and mojo bags. You can buy 
the following. I wrote it down here. You can find the following just for a dollar in your grocery store. You can buy garlic. Garlic is used for protection. Basil is used for love. Chili pepper is used if you are a practitioner of voodoo. Oregano is used for marriage or if you are a kitchen witch. Onion pepper. Onion pepper, no, onion powder, onion powder, okay, I got it. Onion powder is used for protection and chop onion, just like you would chop an onion when you make a spaghetti or bake ziti, that is also used for protection. All of these things can be found in your grocery store for a dollar or if you go to um, stop and shop, you can probably find it for 69 cents. <laughs> That's what I saw in the store today when I went grocery shopping. They were selling spices. It was like a bargain sale, I guess, all tossed in the big bin there. And I saw some spices that I usually use in my own craft for 69 cents. Less than a dollar. So do check out their coupons. Because you know witches love deals. Witches love saving money. So check the local weekly circular in your, um, the grocery store in which you shop at. The second thing that costs a dollar is sea salt. Sea salt, once again, can be found in your local grocery store. You can buy sea salt that is coarse or finely grounded. You can use this to cast your circle and to put in the four corners of your home if you happen to be dealing with um, ghostly activity or you may have somebody that you don't want to come into your house anymore. Still put sea salt in all, in all four corners of your house and you could also pour it in the four corners of your entire property. I know that might take a long time, but if you really want somebody to stay away from you, or if you want to get rid of ghostly activity, sea salt is the way to go. And you can buy it, like I said, at the grocery store, either coarse or um, finely grounded. The third is candles. Candles are used a lot in witchcraft. They have candles um, at, once again, at Stop and Shop for 99 cents, less than a dollar. No, I haven't. That's probably a spell, but no, I haven't heard of that. Candles. Tea light candles, pillar candles, um, jaw candles, even the Yankee candles, you can use that too, as long as the color reflects your intent. You, of course, Yankee candles cost like $15. <laughs> but the only reason why I buy Yankee candles is because I like the smell of them, and it really is true to the smell that it says like, I don't know, lavender. I love lavender. So I would probably buy a Yankee Candle at Marshalls or Target or CVS just to treat myself. Not because I'm actually going to use it in the craft, but just because I like the, the scents that they have. But tea light candles are a dollar. Um, pillar candles are maybe a dollar and 59 cents. Two dollars, two dollars at the most. I've never seen a pillar candle more than two dollars. But if you buy a pillar candle at a witch shop, it's going, you're going to be charged about thirty dollars for it because they add so much to it and it's so elaborate and stunning. It's um, visually appealing, so that's why they charge you so much for a pillar candle that you can get at any store on the block for a dollar fifty nine. So if you can afford those thirty dollar candles from witch shops and 
you really are doing a big ritual like for Sao Win that's coming up on October 31st which is the witch's new year then you might want to treat yourself and buy you a, a, a Sao Win candle at your favorite witch shop and New York City has a lot of witch shops especially in Manhattan like on um, in Greenwich Village am I even saying that right? Greenwich Village <laughs> whatever it's it's fucking in Manhattan. That's where it's at. It's in Manhattan. And they do charge you more now because it's October and a lot of people want to do divination and cast spells and hatses and curses for their enemies and to bring prosperity, abundance, financial freedom, debt free, cars, houses, relationships. So the prices are a little bit higher in October. You can have, they have all of them basically. And when you use a candle, when you buy one of those dollar candles, you can choose to carve symbols that relate to your intent. And you can anoint it with your favorite oils, like lavender, rosemary, lilac. And let me tell you something about oils. Oils are not cheap. Pure lavender is not cheap. It's about 20 to $35. It's not easy to make oil. It is time consuming, so that's why the price is so high. But if you don't have a essential oil, you can use olive oil or vegetable oil as a substitute. Olive oil is about $3.99. Vegetable oil four dollars and ninety nine cents so choose wisely because essential oils are not cheap and when you go to a witch shop or if you buy it online they are always going to overcharge you always even though they're charging the price for what it's worth they're going to jack up the tax so instead of it being $35, you might end up paying $41 because they know that you need it. So that's why they overcharge you. That's why it's so important as a witch to know how to make your own stuff. I showed my coven a few months ago how to make their own essential oils at home. So they don't have to go to the witch shops and get ripped off basically when they can just pop themselves in the kitchen and, you know, make it themselves. So that's a little fact about essential oils and two ways, two substitutes if you don't have it, which is olive oil or vegetable oil. And the vegetable oil does not have to be name brand. It's all the same. Okay, all vegetable oil is the same. It's either made from vegetables or it's not. Your body doesn't know the difference. Okay, especially when you're doing witchcraft. If you're just using a cheap vegetable oil just for witchcraft, it doesn't matter what the brand is. It does not have to be name brand. The fifth thing that you can buy for a dollar is seasonal decor. Now I've just said that we have South Wind coming up on October 31st. If you go to Family Dollar or go to the Dollar Tree, you have everything you need to put on your altar for our largest celebration on our Wicked Will. Just for a dollar. Well, if you go to the Dollar Tree store, it is a dollar, but they charge you like eight cents tax. But who who doesn't have eight cents? It's just eight cents. So you can buy all of your ultra decor for every season that we celebrate for just a dollar. You don't have to like right now if you go to Target, they have their Halloween stuff out. If you go to Party City, they have their Halloween stuff out. If you go to a store in Lower Manhattan, I believe it's called Halloween Adventures. They have their stuff out all year round. It's going to cost you so much money. So instead of you paying a dollar for a 
Halloween slash Samhain tablecloth. If you go to Party City, they're going to charge you five ninety nine for the same shit. Why the hell am I paying five ninety nine when I can get the exact thing at the Dollar Tree store for a dollar and eight cents tax? It's the same shit. You're not getting four dollars out of me. It's, it's not going to happen. When I can get it, the same shit for like four dollars less. It's not happening. So, I know that a lot of witches love to decorate their altar, especially for Samhain. You can't get no bigger holiday than that. So, just take yourself to the Dollar Tree store. Um, Dollar Tree store closest to me is running out of decor for Halloween because people buy it because it's so cheap. So, if you have a family dollar store near you then go there and pick up your stuff for just a dollar the fifth thing you can buy for a dollar is incense once again if you go to a witch shop to buy incense it's not going to be no damn dollar it's not a dollar it's about seven or eight dollars because they make it by hand. Yes, you can make your own incense. I have to show my coven how to do that as well, how to make their own incense. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to get to it shortly. You can go to the incense store to not you can go to like a dollar nine nine cent store and buy incense for a dollar. The only drawback to that is their incense at the 99 cent store the scent is not as strong as it would be if you actually brought it from a wood shop the good thing is that since it's not so strong it won't linger in the house you won't have so much smoke so if you live in a if you live in a house and you're not yet out of the broom closet and you don't want anybody to know yet that you are a witch, you can just buy these 99 cents in cents because the smoke does not last and the scent does not last either. So your roommate, your parents won't mistakenly think that you're smoking drugs, smoking weed, because the smoke does not last. And another good thing about the 99 cent incense is because the smoke doesn't last so long, your fire alarm in the house won't be going off. <laughs> and also when you are um, burning things for rituals or spells or hexes or curses, you might want to take your fire alarm down so it won't be going off and you won't have that distraction of having to go um move the smoke away from your fire alarm or having to take it down i don't know honestly i don't know how fire alarms are made or how the batteries get put in there because when i first started doing witchcraft and i was like burning things the fire alarm would go off and I would take it off the wall and I'm looking at it like how the hell do I take the batteries out? And I had no choice but to literally throw it against the wall and just smash it, just, just break it so I can stop that annoying sound that you could probably hear in the next damn galaxy. I had no choice, I had to throw it against the wall to make it stop going off because I couldn't figure out how to open it from the back. I think you needed like freaking um, a screwdriver. It came with batteries so it wasn't like I put them in myself and could not get them out. So it kept going off and eventually I was annoyed with that. So I just threw it against the wall and it broke and that was the end of that. <laughs> The 
The sixth thing you can buy for just a dollar is jars. Let me tell you something about jars. You want to block, you want to buy glass jars. Do not buy plastic jars because you get mold and mold eats away at the herbs or any brews that you have in it and it will eventually start to smell funky and you'll have to throw the whole thing away. It won't work towards your magical goal. If you are a if you're into herbalism, you know you can never have enough glass jars. You like live and breathe it. Which is glass jars are ideal for storing fresh herbs and brews or you know potions. But using plastic will um make it expire faster and of course you will have mold and it will smell funky so you probably want to just go to the Dollar Tree store and buy a glass jar do not use plastic especially if you intend to store fresh herbs like herbs you grew in your garden you don't want to put it in a um, plastic jar because it's not going to last long as it's going to die and eventually start to stink. Um, also, it will contaminate it and if you happen to be a kitchen witch, you can't eat it if it's contaminated because you will be poisoning yourself and on your way to the emergency room. Okay? So... Use glass jars for everything. Use plastic jars just for um, storing like mayonnaise. Don't use um, plastic jars to store to store herbs or potions or brews because it will expire. It will be contaminated and it will be of no use to you. Either if you are a kitchen witch or if you intend to use those same herbs for a magical purpose. The seventh thing you can buy for a dollar is spring water. They have spring water at the Dollar Tree store. They sell it like in cases. Spring water is used to cleanse your tools, especially if you brought your tools and not made them. Once again, I'm telling you, it's so important for a witch to know how to make his or her own tools. When you buy tools, you have to cleanse it of any energy that may have come in contact with it before you did. You have to. Because you don't know what mood that person was in who made that tool. They may have been in a shitty mood. So if you don't cleanse it, the spell or ritual or hex or curse is going to come out shitty because you did not cleanse it. So you would cleanse your ritual knife, your wand, your chalice, um, any jewelry that you might be wearing when you're at your altar. But you have to cleanse your tools if you are buying them. Because you don't want nobody else's energy attached to it. You want nobody's energy on it but your own. That's why witches get so pissed off when somebody touches their stuff on their altar. They become enraged. And rightfully so. Don't touch people's shit. If it's not yours, leave it alone. Mind your business. Don't even look at it. Don't even look at it. Mind your business. Just walk past it as though it is invisible. Don't touch people's shit. Especially a witch's. Because they will fuck you up. Don't touch people's shit. Keep your hands to yourself. Don't even look at it. The eighth thing you can buy is 
um, small bowls, dishes, and trays to put on your altar as a offering to any god, goddess that you may worship. And to store any type of oils too. When it comes to essential oils, essential oils can last up to, no, it does last up to a year. So make sure that you, when you get essential oils, or if you make your own essential oils, make sure that you write the date down that you got it. Because it will only last a year. Especially if it is pure essential oils, it will only last a year before it contaminates. And contaminated essential oil will not work towards your magical goal. And also, when it comes to essential oils, make sure that you are not allergic. I do not recommend that you put essential oils on your body. So when you are working with them, wear gloves. Wear thick plastic gloves, especially if you have an allergy towards them. Because some essential oils, if they come in contact with your body, they will send you to the emergency room. Depending on how bad a reaction that you have had. So be very careful. Be informed. Ask the person that's selling the oil or check the ingredients of the oil before you make it. Because some essential oils are so dangerous it can kill you. I'm not going to give out the list. All this in my cover, I'm going to announce that to the essential oils that are deadly. But do make sure that you do your research before you use an essential oil and always wear gloves. When I make essential oils or when I buy them, I always wear my thick yellow gloves because I just don't want the smell on my hands. Not because I have a allergy towards them. I just don't want that strong smell on my hands. Don't, that smell can stay on my hands for maybe a day and a half. And I don't want to smell like, you know, rosemary. I'm, after a couple hours, I'm over it. I don't want to smell like rosemary anymore. So to prevent that, I wear gloves. The final thing that you can buy for a dollar is wine glasses. Once again, you can find it at Dollar Tree Store or Family Dollar. You can use it as a chalice. You can decorate it however you want to. You can use seashells ribbons, um, charms, you can paint it with acrylic paint. Don't use um, watercolors because watercolors is not going to um, stick around. It's going to like start to fade away. I don't care if it's Crayola watercolors. It's not going to um, stick around. So do use acrylic paint if you intend to paint your chalice. Wine glasses, some are made out of pure crystal. You can find that at a witch shop, but if you can't afford it, and it's about, they don't sell it in bulk. Each one is about 80 or $85 just for one wine glass. But if you can't afford it, then buy one, buy more than one, and decorate it however you want it. You can decorate it in a reflection of what your spell is. Like if you're doing a spell for a job, a better car, a better house, for a marriage proposal, whatever decorate it however you feel is going to work towards your intent so those are nine things you can find at the store for just a dollar let me tell you again where you can find me on social media find me on instagram at 
autumn underscore phoenix one find me on my facebook page at magically blessed find me on twitter at priestess autumn find me on youtube at autumn phoenix find me here on periscope at autumn phoenix so thank you for joining me and i will be um leaving this up for the replay for anybody that missed it and for anybody who wants to save some money on their witchcraft supplies. Thank you and blessed be everybody.